when you ride up and down the elevator at the Dana-Farber or at the Brigham, if you land on the wrong floor, you land on a research floor. And you go another floor and you're on a clinical floor. In most institutions, you have the scientists on one side of the campus and you have the hospital on the other side of the campus. And in this place, you've got them both together. And that, I think, is one reason why discovery is just exploding from this place. The benefits of research to individual patients can't be underestimated. Uh, you, you may not think that, that you are going to be directly impacted by, by modern research in breast cancer, but you will as a patient. Uh, breast cancer treatment has changed dramatically over the past 20 years, and all of that's because of, of research. We recognize, as do other people, that breast cancer is not one single disease. Just by virtue of the fact that it occurs in the breast doesn't mean that it's the same disease in individual patients. A hormone-sensitive breast cancer in an elderly female is as different than a hormone-insensitive breast cancer in a young woman as a heart attack is from a stroke. And yet they've been treated traditionally as one disease, breast cancer. The ability to take this disease apart and to put it into its homogeneous component diseases and then to design specific therapies for those individual uh, diseases is going to be, uh, I think, a major advance. At Dana-Farber Partners Cancer Care, years ago, a tissue bank has been established. There are thousands and thousands of patient samples in the bank, not only of breast cancer tissue and normal breast tissue, but also of their blood analysis. We have sufficient tissue for genomic array analysis, and this is enabling the medical oncologist to specifically tailor the type of chemotherapy for a given patient. The second way in which we've treated breast cancer traditionally uh, around the world is to do surgery first. And then you got treated with the potentially toxic agents that you didn't need. That's going to change. The way we're going to change it is to give chemotherapy first, uh, so-called preoperative therapy. There's several advantages of to giving chemotherapy before doing surgery. You get the chance to see in that patient whether she and her tumor are responding to the drug that you're giving her. And you can make this genetic measurement. You know, you can take a sample of the tumor prior to therapy, run a genetic profile or an expression array on it, and then correlate what you know genetically about the cancer with whether or not she responds. A some fraction of patients uh, who have tumors that are large, the tumor can be reduced in size uh, so that the breast can be conserved. Um, our rates of breast conservation at Partners Cancer Care are the highest in the country. Patients from over 30 countries annually come to us for their care. We frequently do breast cancer surgery uh, under a procedure that's known as regional anesthetics. So a patient undergoing a mastectomy uh, or a removal of lymph nodes under her arm doesn't have to be put to sleep. The benefit of that is that one, she wakes up with no pain. She has none of the effects of general anesthesia because she doesn't have a tube down her throat and gases given to her. So she has no nausea. Uh, and if the operation was done perfectly, as it is done every time, um, she can go home. I really do predict that over the next 10 years that we will see a, a uh, a, a big shift in the way that breast cancer is being treated and a big improvement in, in breast cancer outcome. With our advances over the past decades in breast cancer care, we can now with great confidence say that for the vast majority of women diagnosed with breast cancer, we have appropriate treatments to bring them through their treatment time and for them to go on and live their full life expectancy.